What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. So we're going to be putting a little halt on the mini project and that's because of something that came up. So right now in today's video, I'm going to be working on the 240 because I need to get this thing going. Now you're probably going to be thinking, what's wrong with it? Well, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's some still, there's a couple uh, preventative maintenance things that I want to do to the car. So I just went ahead and inspected the brakes, um, bled the system. I just installed a fuel filter. No, that's a lie. Hold up. I will be installing a new fuel filter. So this is the OEM one from Nissan. And I don't think this thing has been replaced in uh, 20, however many years old this thing is. Um, I've got a new K&N one right here. Really simple. Um, there's two hoses, one on the top, one on the bottom. Unplug them and the whole thing will be able to be replaced. Now I'm going to be doing that to the Nissan because the Accord has a little hiccup with it. So the Accord is approaching 200,000 kilometers. Yes, I did change out the wheels, but that's not the point of the video. Um, the car has almost 200,000 kilometers and it needs the timing chain in the engine replaced. So if we take a look at the engine, we have the engine itself right there. This side here is what's called the back side of the motor because the transmission is found underneath on this side. And over here we have the front side of the motor. This is where we have all the accessories um, that are powered by the drive belt. Now if we, well, we can't exactly see it now, but inside the timing cover and down all the way into the block, we have the timing chain that connects the intake cam, the exhaust cam, and the crankshaft sprocket, all of those together. So it holds them all together and makes sure that everything stays nice and timed so that the intakes open at, this, at the proper time, the exhaust valves open at the proper time, and the crankshaft is in the proper position. Now over time, the chain will stretch. Once that chain stretches, you're gonna have an issue where you either might get a check engine light or you might have a valve that kisses your piston if you have an interference motor. So if we look on the back side of the engine and the transmission is right under here, we're going to see that we have two sensors for our uh, camshafts. So we have, see that blue connector there? That's for the intake and we have another one back there and that's for the exhaust. If you have your timing chain problem, you're gonna get either a code regarding one of those or you might also get another code. I'll, I'll link in the description box what the actual code number is, but that is a good way to indicate and see if your timing chain is stretched. Now even though I do have that check engine light, I can still drive the car. Everything works fine, the car revs up fine, but the problem is that I have a check engine light and I need to go and pass my emissions test and with that check engine light, I can't pass it. So what that means is that the Accord is gonna be getting parked for the next week or so. Um, I've got parts coming in for the Accord to fix that problem and I'm gonna be showing you guys, if I can, how to do that entire procedure. If you were to bring this to the dealership, for instance, you'd probably be spending upwards of $1,000, including parts. So by doing it yourself, you're gonna be saving a lot of money and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now if you have an engine um, that I have, if you have a K-series engine, which is a four-cylinder, it's going to be quite simple and straightforward. The same kind of procedure works if you have a K-20, which is the same kind of motor as this, but just less displacement. Um, but what I'm getting is that what I'm getting at is that because I have this motor, this K24 in the Accord, um, which was also designed for a V6, I should have, in theory, a lot of room in my engine bay to get this done. I don't have to pull the motor, and that's a cop driving by my house. Um, I don't necessarily have to pull the motor, um, which saves me a lot of work. Um, what I do need to do, though, is remove everything on the passenger side wheel well, so the brakes, the wheel, the entire spindle, the coilover, um, the passenger side axle. I need to take everything off of the front side of the motor, so all the accessories, so that I can get access to the timing chain cover and then replace it. Um, but I'm working on the 240 because I have to get that thing working so that I, not working, I wanna make sure that that thing's golden so that I still have a car to drive. The Mini is still broken, it's still up in the air in ja on jack stands, so um, yeah, that's not an option. But the Accord works, no, that's a lie. The Accord doesn't work. But this is just what has to be done. Back to the 240, the fuel filter is gonna be found on the right side of the engine bay. So everything that we're gonna to need to do is all found over here, and we only need simple hand tools. These few screwdrivers and that one pick are all that you need to get this done. So this here is the filter that we removed from the car. So the fuel comes from the bottom and then goes upwards. Now the fuel filter that we're going to be replacing this guy here with is the same kind of thing. However, it's not an OEM piece. This one here is made from K&N. But you can see that the flow still goes in the same way. Now we're going to be attaching the one fuel hose down here and it's clamped off on the bottom. And the same thing goes for the top. So it is quite simple. There's not really much to it. 
Um, the only difficult part that I could see you guys have is that there's going to be fuel inside the old filter when you take it out. So just be sure to catch it with a reg. But also on top of that, when you have your filter, let's say hooked up to the car and you have both lines here and here on it. What I found to be somewhat difficult is the hoses that were attached to the filter were kind of stuck. They weren't rusty. They weren't really disgusting as you can tell, but they still needed some sort of attention and using a pick set will help you very much in getting both of those hoses removed. So before we go ahead and just install this on the car, I'm gonna make it easy for us now and later so that we can take off and put on the hoses very easily. So I'm gonna be applying a little bit of 3M silicone paste on each, ones, on each one of the little nipples that are found on the fuel filter. So we can just put a little dab on there and then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. And then it's gonna make sure, um, it's gonna make it so that the lines aren't going to wanna to corrode or even just get really stuck to the filter. So once you do that, we can go ahead and install this on the cart. So we have this fuel line right here, and this is what actually leads to the fuel rail. Now we're not going to be using or installing this one yet. We're gonna set that one aside, and we're gonna work with the hose that's found down below, because we wanna first install the bottom one, and then install the top one. So this is gonna be quite down there, but just follow it down, and you'll see um, how simple it actually is. So you just slide the fuel filter over top of the hose, Okay, that was easy. And then you're going to slide up the little clamp, just like that one, over top of the hose. So it's not rocket science, and if you take... The clamps themselves should be quite easy to move around because they're made out of stainless steel, as opposed to like a regular steel clamp. So it's going to make it so that it's not going to rust, it's not going to corrode. Uh, most of the fuel system is designed that way. So, once you have it where it needs to be, we're just going to be tightening it up. We're going to tighten up the little clamp just like that. And then after that, you can grab a Phillips screwdriver and tighten up the clamp so that the hose is going to be secured to the end of the nipple. Now, this isn't exactly a hard job, but it's kind of finicky because there's not a lot of room to work with. Now, once I get this on there, I'm going to show you and try to get the camera to show you exactly what I've done. So that there is installed. So you can see that we have the fuel filter right there, and there's going to be that little star clamp the little Phillips uh, screw that we need to tighten up. So as soon as that guy there is tight on the hose, the bottom side of the fuel filter is going to be attached. Now we're going to replicate the exact same thing to the top one with that upper hose and then we're gonna attach it to the end of it right there. So if we reach down here, we can grab our fuel filter and we're gonna pull it up so it's locked into the little bracket that's found down here. And once it's in that position, we can move our hose on the top, slide it over top of the fuel filter and we're gonna be clamping on that clamp just like we did for the bottom one. The next step begins inside the car. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab our key, grab it and turn it to the on position so that the fuel system will prime the fuel filter. Now once that's done, the fuel filter is gonna be filled up with fuel and it's going to allow us to be, turn on the car and not starve anything of fuel. Now you're going to cycle that and do that about three times. And then once you do that for a total of three times, you should then be able to turn on the car and it should start up right away. Okay, so I just took the 240 for a spin and it's perfectly fine, everything is sweet. Uh, fuel filter is good, runs fine, no problems with the engine at all. Now on top of that, I also went ahead and bled the brakes and I also did a little something extra to the wheels. So these wheels are LMGT4s. Now these specific ones started off their life as a silver powder coated wheel. That's how they came from Nissan or Nismo. Um, now the previous owner to these wheels powder coated them black, but they only powder coated the wheel and they left the uh, center cap just bare machined aluminum, just how they are from the manufacturer. But I wanted to change it up and make it so that the entire wheel setup looks like it's a Peru, makes it, I wanted to make it look like this is an authentic um, black from the factory LM GT4. So I just vinyl wrapped each one of the caps black and it matches. Now while I had the wheels off to do that, I also went ahead and bled the brakes. Now I didn't exactly bleed them in the same manner that I usually bled my brakes. Um, I used a little something that my little brother got me for Christmas. Hello. 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 Uh, he's outside, he's working on his car. But the thing that he got me is a Capri uh, vacuum actuated bleeder. So it looks like this. One second. It looks like this, okay? So 
That's the box it came in. This is the machine. So it basically sucks out all the fluid and air that's in the lines and makes it incredibly smooth. So I just took the 240 for a spin and the brakes are so stiff, I don't think I'm going to have to install an aftermarket brake booster because the, pre the pedal feel is awesome. But I'm gonna show you how you were to bleed this should you wanna bleed your brakes. So there's not really many parts to this kit. So there's an air attachment on the back that you were to attach your airline to. It attaches just like that. And then on this end here, we're gonna have this little nozzle, which is another quick release adapter. So you're gonna attach this end, which is another piece that comes with the kit. You slide this over top, push it down, and it clicks into place. Now once you have that in there, if you wanna bleed your brakes, you would attach this end here to your bleeder screw, that, and that exactly is found on your brake caliper, and you can also do this exact same kind of system to your clutch system. But once you have it on there, you're gonna open up the valve, leave it open, and then you're gonna push down on this, and it's going to suck out all the fluid that's in the caliper along with any air. So you can do this entire brake bleeding procedure by yourself should you have a kit like this. Now all that fluid is gonna be evacuated into here, and you don't need to ever f empty this until you get to like, I don't know, what is this? Uh, until you have a liter and a half of brake fluid inside the reservoir. But it's very simple, the air gets sucked in through here, comes out of here, and because there's a hose on the bottom, or on the top, should I say, um, there's a, it causes a negative pressure inside the canister, and it pulls the fluid in the air into it. So, so that's basically it. If you guys wanna pick up this brake bleeder kit, um, that I definitely approve of, check the description box. Now I know they also make smaller uh, hand actuated ones. I'll also link one of those because you guys can see the difference um, and you guys can choose for yourself which one you guys would like. But as for the mini situation, um, I am going to be working on a little bit more. Porting and polishing the head I'm working on and it takes a long ass time. I have a couple extra uh, parts and tools coming in for that so that I can do the job properly and as best as I can. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to completely do that when I'm done that video. But I'm gonna be probably, um, I'm probably gonna get interrupted um, from that when the parts for the uh, Honda come in because I need to get that thing going. Realistically, I don't wanna drive this thing so much um, now that it's still kinda cold but as soon as it does get warm, I won't mind driving this thing. But I need to get the Accord going so I can at least have my daily back. Or sell that and get another daily. I don't know, I'm just kidding. But I'll, I'll be fixing the K24, I'll be doing the whole timing chain and everything. Um, yeah, that's where this video is going to end. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.